This Christmas, we begin our journey on discovering God once again, more intimately, more profoundly, when the whole world experiences isolation and social distancing. We seek light, we seek hope in Him. Who came down to earth, He came to save us humans from darkness, loneliness, disease. This is a silent invitation to celebrate God's plan, a joyous invitation to take a walk with Mary and Joseph, who looked for a place to stay. They searched with hope and found a lowly place where our history hinges on the door of a Bethlehem stable, a lowly manger. His divine plan unfolded what God had promised and prophets foretold. The birth of the Messiah, bringing hope to mankind. Let us recapture that moment. Give hope to the hopeless. Seek the humble, the lowly, the needy, and share the true spirit of Christmas. A time to turn to Him. In, In joyful hope, hope, our God, our, our Savior, our, our Healer, is born again. again. We Christians find ourselves on the eve of the miracle of Christmas, the nativity of our Lord, foretold by the angel Gabriel to a virgin named Mary in the obscure town of Nazareth. How do we celebrate Christmas this year? The coronavirus pandemic, though somewhat eased, still has an unrelenting grip on the world. With social distancing and restrictions on large gatherings and get-togethers, a challenging situation for the second consecutive year. What can we do or say? In these dark, uncertain times, we are reminded to welcome and open our lives to the light of God. The focus on the true celebration of Christmas is the birth of Christ and the reason to celebrate, no matter the situation. Yes, the trappings of Christmas, Santa Claus, toys, tinsel, decorations, presents under the tree. Do we believe that Christmas is all these worldly things which have little to do with the real meaning of Christmas? We need to focus on the real situation. Yes, I am reminded of the first Christmas, the cold wintry season, no room in the inn, a stable with a trough and straw, socially distanced from the trappings of humans, and wrapped in swaddling cloth. Come, let us take a walk through Bethlehem. There is no room. The inns are full. We have traveled from afar. We need to find shelter before it's too late. I am famished. I just need some food. I can't walk any further. I need to rest my weary body. These Romans, they have desecrated our land. And now the mighty Emperor Augustus wants a census? For what? Counting us like oxen, sheep, cattle to claim ownership. Move on, move on. Words will not give us answers. We have to find a place to spend the night. The Romans? They bring their standards into our holy city and desecrate the sanctity of our God. The answer lies in the Messiah. When, oh, when will he come? We have waited too long. Suffered too long too under the cruel oppression of the detested Romans. The winter solstice, the darkest, the coldest and the longest night. Tomorrow will be brighter. Let's go. We have to find a place to spend the night. Look, over there, Mary and Joseph. They look tired. They have traveled many miles. Yes, riding on a donkey, the most derided, outlawed animal in the world. Joseph, my strength is almost gone. 
Mary, sit here. I see a tall and stately house. The door stands open wide. Let me try. God save you, gentle master. Can you give us your littlest room? It will serve our need. For lordlings and for ladies, I have lodgings. But for you and for your maid, there's no room. No room. Well, help me. I am ailing. I cannot walk no more. Take heart. Take heart, Mary. I see another inn. God save you, kind hostess. I beg you, house my wife. Her time is right. My guests are rich men's daughters and sons. Go, look for the poorer quarters where ragged people go. Good sir, my wife is in labour. Just a corner will serve our need. Not I. Go knock on my neighbour. As for me, I'll sleep. In all this lighted city, where rich men are welcome, will not one house for pity take two poor strangers in? Take heart, Mary. I see another inn, the keeper and his wife. Good sir, I implore you, afford my wife a bed. Oh, I'm so sorry. There is no room in the inn. Yes, the rooms are all taken. I see a wife over there and my heart fills with pity. I feel compassion too, but all the rooms are taken. There is nothing I can do. No, stay! We have the stable where our cattle are housed. Then gladly, in the manger, we will stay, kind host and hostess. The animals are our friends. Oh, sweet Mary, our journey ends at last. You can lie down soon and rest your weary limbs. Yes, the cattle are friends. And they will keep us warm. Thank you kindly, dear host and hostess. You understand our needs. Later, we will look in and see what you need. We'll bring some food, warm milk, and whatever else you need. Now praise the Lord that found us this shelter and may his blessings be upon you both.
that first Christmas, pity and compassion prevailed in that little inn in the hearts of the innkeeper and his wife. They understood the need of Mary and Joseph. Though they had the inn, it was full. There was no room at all. So they offered them the stable. It is time-honored hospitality. There were no charges, no fee. We see the humility of both Joseph and Mary as they graciously and thankfully accept what is offered to them. Their gratitude towards their hosts and to God conveys their simplicity and profound spirituality. No Christmas trappings, no commercialized consumerism. So, the gift of Christmas serves as a reminder that God is with His people, He is with us, and where the true spirit of Christmas lies. And so, on that cold night, Mary's child was born. But there were no clouds in the sky to hide God's glorious heavens and stars proclaiming the birth of a king. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of the flocks. It's a cold night. That's because it's a clear sky. The stars look fantastic. That one over there, the one that appears to be hanging just over Bethlehem, that's a new one, I think. So it is. It is really bright. I wonder whether it means anything. That star scares me. It wasn't there last week. The stars have got to be the most beautiful thing in God's creation. Where do they go? Where do they come from? I don't care. Stop your stargazing and get the fire going. Look at Isaac sleep already. Let him sleep. He's the little one. That new star is shining over Bethlehem. Remember? When God told Abraham that he would make his children as numerous as the stars in the heavens, perhaps a new descendant of Abraham is being born tonight? We are poor lowly shepherds, not philosophers. God is trying to tell us something. Greetings on this holy night. Do not be afraid. I bring you wonderful news. N -n news? Wake up, Isaac, wake wonderful up! Wonderful news. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. Go with your brothers into town. You will find a baby wrapped in a cloth lying in a manger. Stop covering on the ground and get up. Didn't you hear the angel? The saviour of a new king is born. Let us hurry. Look at the star. It shines even brighter. Didn't I tell you that a new descendant of Abraham was being born? Yes, I'm ready. Let us go. No Christmas program is complete without its little band of gunny-sack shepherds. Frightened by the angel's sudden appearance, they marvel at the good news from the angel and rush to Bethlehem to see the Saviour King. They spread the good tidings, leave the stage, and we hardly give them another thought. But why did the announcement come to them at all? Why not to priests and kings? Who were they that they should be eyewitnesses of God's glory and receive history's greatest birth announcement? In Jesus' day, shepherds stood on the bottom rung of the Palestinian social order. They shared the same unenviable status as tax collectors and dung sweepers. Only Luke mentions them. 
Since Old Testament times, shepherds had sunk low in the social order. Religious leaders had maintained a strict caste system at the expense of shepherds. Into the social context of religious snobbery and class prejudice, God's son stepped forth. How significant that God handpicked lowly, unpretentious shepherds to first hear the joyous news. It's a boy and he is the Messiah. Even from birth, Christ moved among the lowly. The shepherd's figure was immortalized by our Lord Jesus when he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. No other image so vividly portrays his tender care and guiding hand. As we gaze on nativity scenes and smile at the Gunnysack shepherds, let's not lose sight of the striking irony. A handful of shepherds marginalized by the social and religious elite were chosen to break the silence of centuries, heralding the Messiah's birth. Christmas is a time to accept and celebrate all people. Despise not the lowly, be humble and rejoice, for the good news is for everyone. I see three figures approaching, riding on camels. I don't trust old Herod. I too feel the same. He seems a nasty, old, crafty fox. He wasn't happy when we told him that we had followed a star that led us to his country. Yes, when I told him that we were looking for the new king, a very special ruler, a living prophecy, a messiah. His eyes narrowed. He sat up full of attention. I said, a powerful king who has dominion over heaven and earth. He stood up and spoke deceitfully and said that he has decided to help us. He would make inquiries. We must be cautious. We come from foreign parts. We might get into trouble. Look, the star still leading us. Herod wanted us to report back to him so he may also worship this newborn babe. The star, it's not moving. So we have arrived at last. I see a stable. The star hangs over it.
descendant of Abraham was being born. I was afraid then. Now I'm not. Something has happened in my heart. I feel so happy. I want to shout and sing and jump and dance. Why don't you sing and dance, little brother? The mighty God of Abraham has looked upon us, lowly shepherds. My heart is light too. Let us go back to our sheep. They need our care. A strange dream, warning us not to go back to Herod. So, our suspicions are right. We take a new route and find our way home. A king, born in a stable, in the tiniest village, Bethlehem. There was calm, peace and joy in the stable. Lowly shepherds to worship him, the newborn babe, the king of Israel. No mystery really, King David was a shepherd. Let us go, we have a long journey home. Our eyes have witnessed a prophecy fulfilled. Shepherds 
went back to their fields and the wise men to their respective countries. The gifts of the three wise men, gold, frankincense and myrrh. Yes, gold as a symbol of kingship, frankincense as God and myrrh foreshadowing his passion and death. And of course, his glorious resurrection. Getting back to Herod's palace, since the wise men did not report back to him, he was furious. He sent a group of his finest soldiers with this order. Kill all the boys in Bethlehem and in the neighborhood who are two years old and younger. In this way, what the prophet Jeremiah had said came true. A sound is heard in Rama, the sound of bitter weeping. Rachel is crying for her children. She refuses to be comforted, for they are dead. After the three visitors from the east had left, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph and said, Herod will be looking for the child in order to kill him. So get up, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt and stay there until I tell you to leave. Joseph got up, took the child and his mother and left during the night for Egypt. The journey to Egypt has been estimated to be 400 miles long, a journey of no less than 30 days. Imagine the very young and delicate Mary, with her newborn infant, her husband at her side, wandering through the wilderness. The only place they could have slept along the road, especially through 200 miles of desert, where there were no houses or inns, was on the sand or under a tree in the open air, and exposed to the dangers of robbers and wild animals, with which Egypt abounded. Take heart, Mary. God is with us. I hear the cries of innocent children, their tiny bodies mutilated, cut up by swords, thrown into ditches, mothers screaming in pain. So dreadful, pitiful. Let's go, my gentle Mary. Let's bow to God's will. And so, Joseph and Mary fled to Egypt with the infant Jesus cradled in their arms of love, reversing the steps of Moses, Aaron, and Miriam who had led her ancestors to freedom so long ago. Mary wondered as they rested if they would ever see their homeland again. Doesn't this open our eyes to the reality of Christmas, what Christmas really means and what our concerns should be? The pandemic has created unprecedented problems, poverty, joblessness, people in need of food, clothing, books. War situations have created refugees. To experience the true spirit of Christmas, we should be moved by compassion, be merciful, and help the helpless. Heed the cries of the hopeless. Our search ends with hope, where history hinges on the door of a Bethlehem stable, a lowly manger. His divine plan unfolded, what God had promised and prophets foretold the birth of the Messiah, bringing hope to mankind. Let us recapture that moment. Give hope to the hopeless. Seek the humble, the lowly, the needy, and share the true spirit of Christmas. A time to turn to Him in joyful hope. Our God, our Savior, our Healer, is born again in our hearts. And so, it is time to celebrate the birthday of our Lord, our Saviour. Let us rejoice and sing with hope in our hearts. 
in joyful hope.